So in this video, I'll just take a look at the four reaction types that you need to know for level one science. Um, the first one then, we referred to in the last video I just did, was the reaction between an acid and a base. So this is a, an acid and a base gives you a salt and water. And that's general. So that's the general equation. So you need to remember the products for an acid and base reaction. And um, if we take a word equation, then you could have nitric acid plus calcium hydroxide. And then the salt, if you remember from my previous video, is made up of the metal comes first. So the metal forms its ion, so it's going to be calcium, because there's only one metal out of all of the chemicals that you can see on your left hand side there. And then uh, the subscript or the ending of the salt is made from the particular acid that it's reacting with. So it's going to be calcium nitrate in this case. So that's your salt plus water. That's the word equation because we're using words. Sometimes students uh, start writing symbol equations on their assessments when it clearly says to write the word equation. So don't make it any harder on yourself than it has to be. Now, if you want to try and go for the symbol equation, well, here we go. Nitric acid is HNO3. Um, if you can't remember your acids, then take a look at the table of ions at the end of your, or in your resource booklet, and you should be able to combine H plus ions and nitrate ions to make nitric acid. Um, but you should start remembering by the time, remembering them with lots of practice. Calcium hydroxide is CaOH, and there are two of them. Um, and that's because the charge from the calcium ion is plus two, so you need two of these because they're negative one. Um, so that's calcium hydroxide. And calcium nitrate then is going to be CaNO3, again in brackets because of the C, uh, two plus charge in calcium, and there's only minus one in the nitrate ion. The two here, by the way, it means that everything inside the brackets is multiplied by two. So you would have two nitrogens and six oxygens. And we have to put brackets because this is a polyatomic ion. You have to put brackets for a polyatomic ion if you have more than one. Um, if you had calcium chloride, well, there's only one element making up that ion, so you wouldn't have to put brackets in there. So that's um, a common question I get asked in class. So the brackets are just for polyatomic ions because you have to show that both elements inside the ion need to be multiplied by the two. So calcium nitrate plus water, which is H2O. Now let's take a look at this equation and see what needs to be done to balance it. Um, if you look here, you have um, two hydrogens, and then we have three hydrogens on the left-hand side. So that's not a good situation. So you have two hydrogens there, and you have one right here. And then we just have two hydrogens here. So our hydrogens are not balanced. And um, if we also look here, we have two of the nitrate ions. So what this is effectively saying is that we have two times the nitrate ion. And on the left hand side, we only have one of them. We only have one nitrate ion. So we're clearly on balance in the nitrates as well. Now the only way we can get two nitrate ions on the left hand side is to multiply this whole compound by two. And if we do that, that means we now have uh, of hydrogens, we now have four. So we have two in the nitrate right here. And we also have two from the calcium hydroxide. So we have four hydrogens now. And therefore, we need to multiply our water by two as well to get four. And that actually makes the equation balanced. So this is called balancing by inspection, just by looking at the equation and, and adding factors where you can. You can only put large numbers at the front of the molecule. You cannot alter these little small numbers, these little subscripts. Do not touch them when you're balancing equations and don't change the elements in any way. Um, the only thing you can do is change the large numbers that you put at the front. So that's the balanced equation for nitric acid plus calcium hydroxide forming calcium nitrate plus two molecules of water. So that's the first of the four types of reactions. The second type then we'll look at you just go back to my black pen. Second type we can look at is a metal plus acid reaction. You would have done this a lot in junior science. It's a classic. It produces um, a salt and hydrogen gas. And of course, the hydrogen gas then can be used to introduce the pop test. Um, a word equation, so it's a general, general equation. You get a salt and hydrogen. A word equation could be magnesium plus hydrochloric acid. And that would give you your salt. Again, the metal comes first, so it's magnesium, and it's made up of the subscript from the acid, which would be chloride in this case. So magnesium chloride plus hydrogen, which is a gas. 
Um, simple equation for this then. Simple equation would be magnesium, Mg, plus hydrochloric acid, HCl, going to magnesium chloride, MgCl2, and that's because the charge in the magnesium ion is plus two, therefore you need two times the negative one from the chloride ion to make a neutral ionic compound. And then you get hydrogen gas, which is H2. So just remember hydrogen gas is always H2. Um, oxygen is O2, carbon dioxide is CO2, hydrogen is H2, and nitrogen is N2 as well. Okay, so this equation is not just balanced either. It's quite simple to balance though. You have two chloride ions here, so you multiply the HCl by two, and that also gives you two hydrogens there to match up with the two hydrogens there. So that's your balanced symbol equation for a metal plus acid reaction. The test for hydrogen gas, by the way, is you take a lighted splint and it will explode, making a squeaky pop sound. So that's known as the pop test. And that's pretty memorable. So that's the second type. The third type of reaction you can come across is a metal oxide plus acid. And we did this one in class to produce copper sulfate crystals, nice, nice blue copper sulfate crystals. You take a metal oxide plus an acid, you will also get a salt plus water. So that's a general equation. A word equation for that could be copper oxide. The copper oxide is a black powder, very fine, and can create quite a mess if you spill it on your desk, uh, plus sulfuric acid. And that will produce, in this case, your salt again starts with the metal, which is copper and takes the suffix from the acid, which is going to be sulfate in this case, so copper, so copper sulfate crystals uh, plus water. And then your symbol equation for that would be copper oxide, which is CuO, and you can check your table of ions for that. Uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, you start memorizing these after a while. Your copper sulfate is CuSO4, and your water is just H2O. So there's actually nothing to balance there. We have two hydrogens here, two here, we have one sulfur, one sulfur, four oxygens, plus another one there, that's five, four plus one, five, and then your copper is balanced as well. Um, this actually produces blue crystals, and that's when you evaporate the water. And uh, so we evaporated it a little bit using a Bunsen and then let it dry over the weekend, and we had some nice blue crystals from that. So that's a metal oxide plus an acid. And the fourth and final type of reaction that you need to be familiar with the level one science is a metal carbonate, metal carbonate plus acid, and this will give you a salt plus water, but it will also give you carbon dioxide gas. And of course, the carbon dioxide gas comes from the fact that you're using a metal carbonate. So if you have a metal carbonate, you're going to get carbon dioxide gas. Um, and a word equation for this: calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate plus sulfuric acid will give you calcium sulfate plus water plus water plus carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. And then a symbol equation uh, calcium carbonate is CaCO3, sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Calcium sulfate is CaSO4, water is H2O, and carbon dioxide is CO2. Balance that equation. It's actually balanced, so it works out really easily as well. I'll just show you that. Um, you have your carbonate, one carbonate ion there, um, which has three oxygens in it, and you have four oxygens there, so there's seven oxygens all together on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you have um, four oxygens in the sulfate. Plus you have one there in the water and then two in the carbon dioxide. So you have seven oxygens as well there. Um, for the calcium, you have just one on the left-hand side right there. And on the right-hand side, you have just one. For the carbons, you have one from the carbonate. And then you have, on the right-hand side, you have one from the CO2. For the hydrogens, you have two from the sulfuric acid, and you also have two from the water, so they're all balanced as well. The sulfurs, you have one of those on the left-hand side. Right-hand side, you have one right there. And um, so the whole equation is actually balanced. And the test then for carbon dioxide gas is to use some lime water. 
and lime water will turn from clear to milky. And I just demonstrated this by blowing through a straw into some clear lime water and it turns milky because of the CO2 which comes from your exhaled breath. So there are the four um, reaction types that you need to be familiar with uh, for level one science. And the main thing with balancing equations is practice, 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 and check, do this check, and make sure that you have the same numbers and type of each element on the left-hand side as you do on the right. Um, and that's your four reaction types for level one science.